What's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG aka The Random Black Gamer bringing you a breakdown on the official trailer for Transformers 1. It was revealed about 24 hours ago by way of Paramount's official channel where it was literally launched in space. Which reassures us that this is going to take place on a distant planet far away from Earth. And we have a lot to go over so stay tuned. Now before we jump into the breakdown I want to ask you guys to do me the biggest favor and thumbs up this video. Let's try to get this video to a thousand likes. Yeah, I know you hate getting this request at the very beginning of a video before you watch it in its entirety, but YouTube's algorithm encourages it. So if you rock with your boy and you know I'm going to bring you that awesome content, then smash that like button. And if by any chance you make it to the end of this video and you feel like you wasted 10 minutes of your life that you can't get back, then feel free to take that like back and give it a dislike. Just rate the video. But yeah guys, Transformers 1 is officially in motion. Now that Paramount has released this trailer, the marketing machine is going to be moving full speed ahead and we're going to continue to get awesome details and merchandise pertaining to this movie. But with that said, we can't ignore the big elephant in the room. There's obviously been a very mixed reaction to this trailer which stems from a multitude of things. While it does take place on Cybertron away from all those fleshlings that we despise so much, many fans were under the assumption that we would also get something more serious in tone compared to the comedic elements that we got in the previous installments. But as you've seen in the trailer, it's very much going to be a movie more tailored towards kids, which I don't necessarily have a problem with, but I can understand why others do. They were probably thinking that this movie was going to take place during the Cybertronian Civil War. But they have to keep in mind that this is actually taking place before the events of the Great War. It's essentially going to be a coming of age story that shows all the events that led up to the big dispute between the Autobots and Decepticons. So it's not going to be as somber and gritty as some of you guys would like. But I think this is going to give us a little bit of a break from all the chaos and show us the simple and everyday lives of these characters. Because Cybertronians aren't just robots, these are individuals who have their own unique personalities and they serve a specific role in this society. And as always with society comes different social classes which we're going to talk about later on in the video. But man can we talk about how beautiful this movie looks? I was initially under the impression that this thing was going to look a lot sillier than what we got because there were leaks that suggested it. Not to mention that anytime a studio produces a CG animated project that's in a similar vein to the Spider-Verse movies which you guys have heard me mention in the past. Like I think those movies are very creative their style incarnate if you ask me but this movie is striving to be something totally different that very much echoes the sentiments of what we saw in the yesteryear of Transformers particularly in the War for Cybertron games and I'm totally here for it I think Cybertron is going to boast different environments because it is a very multifaceted planet and we're going to get a unique twist on familiar characters we've come to know and love but anyway starting off with the first sequence we see Optimus Prime aka Orion Pax and Megatron who be called D16 sitting in a holding cell where they're waiting to hear their punishment. As I mentioned earlier this story is going to revolve around classism and these two particular characters just so happen to be in a lower class of Cybertronian citizenship and they most likely snuck into a place they weren't supposed to be at and they've since been apprehended because of it. Anyways it's from there that we get a taste of their friendship where we see Orion ask D16 how long they'll be there to which D16 yells at him for getting them in this situation. The two are then taken by a super Super imposing enforcer robot who throws the two into another cell and tells them to report to waste management. And many are suspecting that this character could potentially be Darkwing because if you notice he has the ability to fly. But shortly after this the two are introduced to another character who goes by the name of B127 and if you've been watching any of the recent Transformers movies you'll instantly recognize this name as the original designation for Bumblebee in his self-titled movie. Where's B127? Where once he reunites with Optimus Prime he tells Prime to address him as such. My name is Bumblebee. But now it looks like he's going back to that original moniker and he's going to be trying to figure out what he really wants to call himself. Which D16 suggests that they're just going to call him B. And I just want to point out that this is going to be a part of that coming of age story aspect that I was telling you guys about earlier which takes heavy inspirations from stories like the War for Cybertron comics and Megatron origin comics where the Quintessons who are mostly known for creating the Transformers come in and invade Cybertron and disrupts the natural order in which they were trying to develop their civilization 
civilization. Like the Cybertronians originally had this thing known as the Well of All Sparks, which essentially aided all the new sparks into creating new bodies for themselves as well as personalities. But after the Quintessons took over the planet of Cybertron, it completely interfered with that process, which not only caused Cybertronians to emerge without names and personalities, but also caused them to lag behind in their technological and social development, which the Quintessons claim was for the best since the new Cybertronians would not want anything out of life other than to work. And that particular time period of Cybertron became known as the Age of Wrath and characters such as Megatron were born during this period and didn't necessarily have a name so he had to name himself after a sector called D16 where he was forced to work in underground mines and as you can see in this footage Orion Pax and D16 just so happened to be worker bots that had to slave in these mines for hours on end. It's from there that we also get a glimpse of what they can be if they take the leap of faith and leave that spot which is why you see this awesome shot of Optimus Prime with a silhouette covering his body, but the Matrix of Leadership embedded in his chest is glowing as bright as day, alluding to him being the chosen one and lighting the darkest hour. But on the flip side of that you have D16 who essentially descends into darkness and ultimately becomes Megatron, branding himself with the Decepticon insignia. And what's sad is that all these things are going to transpire because Orion wanted to take that leap of faith. He wanted to see what was out there on the surface of Cybertron. But all the while D16 is reluctant to do this because he feels like he needs to stay in his place. But moving on as the two decide to go out on this adventure they discover all these awesome landmarks of Cybertron, one of which is the Iacon 5. 5000, which is a racing event where Cybertronians who feature super fast vehicle modes participate in, which includes the likes of characters such as Jazz and Blur. But moving on, the next scene we have is an awesome shot of D16 looking at what looks to be a deactivated version of Megatronus, an original member of the 13 Primes who ultimately turned on his brothers due to being seduced by evil. And after seeing D16 gaze at him in interest, I have a nagging suspicion that he's going to be highly influenced by Megatronus' story and ultimately adapt his name, except he's going to shorten it to Megatron. Not sure if it's just me, but this kind of reminds me of the Tomb of the Primes from Transformers Revenge of the Fall which also features Megatronus as the main antagonist because we see the group walk into this chamber that looks awfully similar to the one with Megatronus and it features similar looking characters who are most likely the rest of the Dynasty of the Primes. But it looks like they're going to be able to bring one back online in the form of Alpha Trion who we know is the oldest living Transformer and also the advisor of the Autobots. But before we delve into the scenes regarding him we got to talk about this awesome shot featuring the Quintessons. That's right they're in this movie and it looks like they're going to be the the ones governing over Cybertron. You get this amazing shot of their ship and in a later scene you see them meeting up with Sentinel and his Autobot Elite Guards unit. It's from there that we see them rough the Big Prime up as if they're displeased with his actions, basically confirming that at one point Cybertron was taken over by the Quintessons. They more than likely aided in the Cybertronians technological advancements and at some point they even set up their rule of law. As I mentioned earlier they pretty much wiped the history of the Transformers and ushered in their own little ideologies and at some point they would gain the adoration of the Cybertronians by way of revealing to them that they could transform via the TCOG, which is something you would think the Cybertronians would already know how to do since it's a part of their birthright. But as mentioned earlier, the Quintessons had wiped out that part of their history. And that brings us back to this sequence which features Alpha Trion, a character that's been around since the early days of Cybertron and really knows that the Cybertronians could transform without the aid of the Quintessons. Which is why we see him give Orion Pax, D16, Alita 1, and Bumblebee, TCOG to allow them to see their full potential, which is something that everybody should have on Cybertron. And since these guys are essentially going to be late bloomers in that area, they're going to have to learn how to use these newfound abilities. And as you can see, their bodies start to change into the characters we know them to be. You see this arm cannon, which is basically the fusion cannon that belongs to Megatron, sprout out of D16's arm. And his body starts to resemble that of the Decepticon High Lord. The same can be said with characters such as Orion Pax, who looks more like a a heroic leader. Not only that, but you'll notice during the trailer when he's giving his narration, he starts to sound more like Peter Cullen, aka Optimus Prime. We stand here together as one. 
But moving on, we see the group try to put their new upgrades to the test, but fail miserably. And one thing that I noticed is that B-127's vehicle form looks awfully similar to the one we saw at the beginning of the Bumblebee movie. And I'm not sure if his name and vehicle mode are a confirmation that this movie is in fact connected to the new continuity, but hey, I'm not gonna rule out the possibility. Anyways, if you look close enough, you may notice D-16 in the background transforming in what looks to be a tank. In another awesome shot, we see Alita 1 showcase how she can be a formidable fighter as she transforms from her Cybertronian motorcycle mode and proceeds to own these other robots. And it's worth noting that she'll serve as an Autobot patrol officer, who originally tries to report Orion Pax D-16 and B-127 after they break into a train facility. Which is why you see this epic train sequence during the beginning of the trailer, because it starts with her chasing them, but the train ends up taking off and sending them on an unintentional trip across Cybertron, where they bear witness to the beautiful landscapes of the surface. But moving on, we get a cool sequence where we see Orion Pax master his transformation as he rolls out and begins blasting these characters in the air and transforms back into his robot mode. We also get the confirmation of another cool character in the form of Arachnid, which looks like she's going to be springing down on somebody. Not sure who, but it looks like it's going to be Orion Pax. I'm also interested in knowing where her allegiance lies, because she usually doesn't ally herself with any faction because she's only interested in test subjects, doing experiments on different creatures and endangered species. So I really am interested in knowing what she's gonna be doing in this movie. In the next scene, we see three familiar characters who are some of my favorite Decepticons in the form of Starscream, Shockwave, and Soundwave. And they look very accurate to their G1 counterparts. Like, I can't lie, these guys are probably my favorite designs out of all the characters. It's also worth pointing out that they were key players in those War for Cybertron comics that I mentioned earlier. Unlike other Cybertronians, Shockwave and Soundwave were lucky enough to emerge from the well of all sparks and actually tap into their cogs. They were also some of the first to rebel against the Quintessons, and it looks like these guys are going to have their own little outlier faction that does that in this movie. And it looks like Starscream isn't the only secret we're going to see because if you look at this scene, you'll notice the character of Skywarp looking to be in an aerial tussle with another robot. We also get a look at just how grand in scale Cybertron is going to be. You see these buildings that are not only pointing up at the sky, but you also have buildings that are dangling from whatever ceiling they're coming from, which is another example of how complex this civilization is. But moving on to the next shot, we get a taste of what B can finally do now that he has his transformation cog. He discovers that he can use a retractable battle mask, which fares quite the resemblance to the face on his G1 action figure. And it looks like he's going to have some abilities that are akin to his Transformers animated counterpart, where he can eject these knives from his hand in the form of stinger blades. I also want to point out this scene which features Alpha Trion transforming into his alt mode, which looks to be this weird rhinoceros thingy. I'm not sure if it's a hybrid of different animals or possibly some kind of chimera, but it looks unique. It looks like something ancient, which definitely fits his character. So I can't wait to see what all it can do. But that's all I was able to find, guys. If you were able to find something that I didn't mention in the video, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also let me know what you liked or disliked liked about the trailer. As always, I ask you to like or dislike this video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on all the different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video.